Hello and welcome to this special show on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ekta Batra and with me is Mr. Umang Bora of SIPLA. We are at their heritage office in Bombay Central and as you can see behind me, it is the office where Mahatma Gandhi has come personally and has met the management, has met Dr. Hamid. Mr. Bora, thank you very much for joining thank in. You. you know, we are in such a historical place. Can you start by telling us about this story and where we are? So this, I think, goes back to 1939. I know that Dr. at that time, uh, it was Dr. Hamid and his father. And I think Mahatma Gandhi ji came here uh, in 1939. And his whole emphasis was self-sufficiency for India. Uh, Sipla had just started. Uh, he actually walked into this office. It pretty much stays the way it is. Uh, and I think from that point in time, uh, Sipla's mission became self-sufficiency, caring for life, um, and that's how we took birth. That's how this company was formed. So there's tremendous energy here, uh, Ekta. This is, uh, we pretty much kept most of how the office, the buildings used to exist. Uh, and we draw a lot of inspiration from this place. So this is where Dr. Hamid comes. Does he go to the lower Perel office, which is the new Sipla, the more modern Sipla? Well, Dr. Hamid's as modern as one can be. You should see him with his smartphones and everything else, but he prefers to sit here. This is his office. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is also the office where our India team sits, our India marketing team sits. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have actually quite a number of people who sit here. Uh, but this, exa this also talks about, uh, you know, Dr. Hamid's comfort zone and somewhere his legacy as well with the vintage cars and mm -hmm. the statues and the beautiful paintings, which we'll see in just a bit. But it talks about his comfort zone as a person and his... Uh, focus of what Sipla was, the history of Sipla, the Swadeshi Robin Hood, might you say. Uh, but now we have Lua Perel, which is a new swanky office, and it talks about a whole new world that Sipla is in, which is the US markets, which is growing India. What is Sipla as we know today? So Sipla is the combination of, you know, if I put three things, it's the combination of legacy that basically says we arrive when people need us, whether it's self-sufficiency, whether it's caring for AIDS, whether it's during COVID. So we are always there. Uh, the second thing that Sipla is, is it's a company that's keeping, trying to keep up with time and ahead of time, right? And therefore you have, you know, as you're rightly pointing out, there's a juxtaposition of this office, the lower parade office are choices of markets, right? And the third thing that, you know, we largely are is a company that works with the heart of a foundation. And so, you know, if you combine these three somewhere, a company that's trying to keep ahead of science, a company that's trying to keep ahead of current times, uh, a very rich legacy purpose, uh, as well as just the ability to, you know, make a difference to people's lives, that is what Sipla is. But that also brings me to the question of what the future of Sipla is, right? Hmm. Because that's the big question, the succession plan. There's been so much speculation about um, whether or not Sipla is on the block, whether the deal will go through. Uh, what can we expect? I know you're a, a part of the company and not a part of the promoter entity, but um, can you clear the air for us? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. Uh, you know, whatever we do is public. Uh, the companies maintain that uh, this is a speculative uh, sort of a, you know, speculative sort of information that's around in the marketplace. The company doesn't comment on it. The promoters have not commented on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we respond to what we do as a company through various statutory, you know, announcements, etc. There has been none, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, as of two days back, we also opened the window for mm -hmm. our employees. So, uh, I think people could infer, right, that uh, things are, uh, you know, based on all of this, that uh, you know, it seems like it's business uh, in Sipla. I, I don't think we, we're not part, doesn't seem like we're part of any transaction, otherwise we wouldn't have opened the window. Okay, but what about uh, the future of Sipla? Because Dr. Hamid obviously must be thinking about what he wants to do next. Yes. Um, and where he wants to leave Sipla. What, what do you think is probably the most feasible option for him or what he's most comfortable with? A PE a promoter entity, or maybe the second generation running it? You know, I think it's difficult to, for me to, you know, try to unravel the depths of Dr. Hamid's experience, mind, thinking at this point in time. I can only tell you what I pick up, right, uh, from him. I think he's most concerned about Sipla. Hmm. 
right? And uh, it doesn't matter to him, at least the way I've understood, about ownership. He just wants the ethos of Sipla to continue. Mm. Um, and to a certain extent, he's relying tremendously on the management team to continue to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, he's pointed out several examples to me of how companies such as the Tata Sons, how companies such as Asian Paints, you know, these continue to coexist uh, through generations of promoters mm. um, and generations of management, mm. right? And so in, in, an, in, a, in a sense, it's not Dr. Hamid's mo problem anymore. Mm. The way it's been told to me, it's become my problem now mm. to ensure that the company continues to survive, continues to live, has succession of people in the management side. And as much as he plans for succession on the ownership side, I have to plan for succession on the management side. So it's a dual... Uh, dual problem and I think we're rested with it. And but in your personal opinion, what do you think is the best way for Sipla to carry on that ethos, to carry on that legacy and to balance the idea of a Robin Hood Swadeshi as well as maybe a US focused company? Yeah, and I th I, so let's take the second part. See, the easier to answer your question on that. You know, many years back, uh, Ekta, I was asked, um, and you know, doc Dr. Hamid's thing about Swadeshi, about the Robin Hood, essentially came out of his ability to bring drugs that were cheaper mm. in the market in India. Mm. Um, and so when we began, when the patent regime came into India and we began partnering with pharma companies, uh, the pharma companies that I would go to to present Sipla would ask me, why would we partner with you? You guys have always tried to bust our patents, right? Mm. And at that point in time, I said, look, Dr. Hamid's view has always been to ensure that the drugs are available mm. at affordable prices for Indians, mm. right? Um, and therefore, if we can cross um, that, you know, if, is there a way in which we can dialogue with that objective in mind and your objective in mind? And then came these discussions on partnering, which we've done several of. Mm -hmm. So I think if we elevate the problem to a stage which is devoid of positioning, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I'd like to believe that Swipla arrives when it's required to, mm -hmm. right? So it arrived to, to fight the patent regime. It arrived to create... Uh, you know, a partnership of sorts with MNCs. It's arrived during COVID, it's arrived during AIDS, right? So we take a human problem and we try and solve around it. And I think that is what, I, I, I would think that's what he wants Sipla to continue to do. So big shoes to fill. Uh, the current name which is doing the rounds, does that continue to be on the cards? Uh, the current name? Torrent Pharma. Well, you know, I, I, it's again speculative, right? Um, again, I would say that we've opened the window Right. Um, I think people should infer from that that, uh, you know, the company has obviously, you know, taken mm. conscious calls and how it would proceed. Uh, and, uh, you know, it respects all kinds of governance and statutory obligations. So you did manage, uh, you actually um, hived off your generics business mm. by a slump sale. Mm. What's the reason for that? Are you probably looking to maybe get a strategic investor in, monetize it? Not really. Uh, I, I don't think we have any such plan. Mm. We just think that uh, the way we are looking at our business, the generic business, and it's very interesting, Ikta, and thank you for asking that question. Um, we see a huge amount of growth coming in India from tier two to six, mm. right? And uh, at, actually, over a period of time, we think that that growth is going to be more significant than what we will see in metros and tier ones. Mm. And you know, for, if you just follow the cues, look at the number of private equity investments going into hospitals, mm. which are for tier two to six uh, cities, right? So Blackstone did care. Yesterday, somebody did, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, a hospitals in Kanpur and beyond, right? And I think that's the thread we're following. Mm. And we just think that that distribution is very different, um, is a different kind of a distribution compared to our metro distribution. Both must coexist in our One India framework. Mm. Right? But I think it's better for this entity right, to be housed in a different place because we don't want to be in a situation where we're trying to view everything necessarily as one mm -hmm. when actually there are differences that exist in how these companies could work in structure. So um, I'll just get to the India business because that's very interesting with trade generics and you know generic generic companies yeah. as well. But before that, uh, the other point of view is that maybe Sipla is too large to run as a single entity and the best way to probably run it is to break it up into different businesses. Is that a thought which has ever crossed the management's mind that you know the US will probably mo be more efficient as a standalone entity, India separate? It, well, you know, the, boards, uh, the board and its mandate always considers these things, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
Some of it is linked to the type of customers we serve. A lot of it is linked to um, the, the success factors that make each business run. Uh, and the third part is really about uh, how is it best governed, right? And, um, um, you know, it's the board's prerogative. Management can suggest various ways of doing this. But, you know, we were a 13,000 crore company. We're now a 25, hopefully closing at a 25 plus thousand this year. So the company's operations have doubled, hmm. right? And that's on top line. But if you look at volumes, that's really gone up significantly. So I would not rule out any of this happening in the future, hmm. right? Um, as we try to become more efficient on capital allocation, as we try and begin to look at ways to run the business, that doesn't mean it's imminent, hmm. right? Um, but I'm sure the board in its wisdom would continue that. So maybe sell a part of the business, which is uh, not as efficient as the others. I don't think we would ever sell any business at this stage. Or get a strategic um, investor? I'm not even sure it's so much about a strategic investor. Uh, I think it's a little bit more about what's the best way to run the company, hmm. right? Uh, I'm, Cipla has never actually been a company that's run for valuation, hmm. right? So the whole concept of trying to take to the board an idea of a strategic investor to boost hmm. uh, valuations, I'm not sure that the board would be conducive, and they would be shocked if I brought a proposal like that to them, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, now coming back to India, because what you mentioned with regards to the tier two to tier six growth is extremely interesting, but because we have an influx of genericized medicine coming into mm. that space as well, trade generics, we have multiple companies entering that space. Uh, how much of a growth driver do you think it will be? And how important is it? What are the, what are the estimates in terms of growth as well? So I think that if the India, let's just say overall India growth, uh, settles in at broadly 10 to 12 percent, right? Um, I think the growth on the tier two to six side should be at least 200, 300 basis higher than that, okay. right? And you know, if you look at the volume numbers of India, that's huge, hmm. right? We're talking about 1.5 billion people. You know, I, I would Im uh, imagine tier two to six is about 600, 700 million people or more, mm. right? Um, I'm going to think that growing at 15% mm. is huge. Okay. Right? So I think this is a huge, huge opportunity um, for India to grow, um, to grow th uh, this high. I think the big differentiating thing about India, um, and actually more at a company level, Ekta, what we're trying to do is we've either got to be differentiated because of technology, or we've got to be differentiated because of our reach. Mm -hmm. Now, tier two to six is clearly a reach problem, mm -hmm. right? And we, uh, you know, that's again for reach, you're right. And then we have a third problem, which is differentiation because of brands, mm -hmm. right? So you and I, when we have breakfast in the morning, we have certain brands in our mind that we'll eat, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we'll, and I think that's the positioning we want. So if we can get 70 or 75% of Cipla's revenues mm -hmm. to be comprised of either differentiated technology, inhalers, peptides, whatever it may be, um, an equal amount, I mean, not, may not be 75, but at least 35% of it be differentiated reach. Mm -hmm. And if we have big brands that occupy 40, 50% of our revenue, we are talking about a very secure organization with a very secure mm -hmm. um, brand, you know, brand thesis for almost, uh, I'd like to believe, 70, 65, 70% of revenues, mm -hmm. right? And that's the quest that we are on. But is competition biting at your heels now? Uh, definitely, definitely. And I, I think it's, it's good that this competition bites at our heels. Mm -hmm. um, we, make, we bite at their heels in certain therapies, they bite at our, our heels. Uh, I think the, the market is huge mm -hmm. for everyone, right? Uh, we have market share pressures, they have market share pressures, but I think India is such a unique place where there's growth happening and there's so much of learning. We learn a lot from our competitors. But you have mentioned in the past that you know you can't pull down prices so much in the Indian markets because eventually it's going to impact yeah. quality. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that that's the reason we've had so many of these quality issues, which has probably dented our image on a global scale? Yes. Uh, I, I, I think it's a mix of two or three things. Um, we are very entrepreneurial as a race. You know, all of us uh, in India are extremely entrepreneurial as a race. Uh, very often, we try to get ahead of ourselves, mm -hmm. right, without uh, making sure. Because, you know, the basic principle of Jugaad is to solve a particular thing and move ahead, right? Um, I think where we are on the world stage now is to appreciate the fact that a Jugaad has linkages with several other elements of the chain, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, and I think it's a realization that we are all going through as a country. So regulation has to coexist with growth, has to coexist with quality, has to coexist with governance, mm -hmm. has to coexist with equality, inclusion, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the new mantra that probably India Inc. is getting used to now, mm -hmm. right? And so, yes, so that's one. One is entrepreneurship. I think the second is really the ability for regulators to enforce regulation, mm -hmm. right? So if you really look at it, you know, Many times the media reports, FDA has visited this plant, there's a, there's a, right? There has to be similar kind, may not be the similar fear, but there has to be a similar kind of respect, right? Uh, and a similar kind of thesis, right? Even for other regulators. It doesn't just have to be the US regulator, right? Indian regulators. Indian regulators. It should be, you know, the others. We, and I think that's the other second part that lift the industry's understanding um, to a level where even the regulators within that country create the same amount of emphasis. And the third is really, you know, India is represented, our market is represented 30%, 40% by the really big companies, but there's 60% who are smaller companies. And, and I think the nature of the industry is how can the 30% or 40% help the other 60%, right? And I, and I think uh, that is the big challenge. Can we actually do a lot more? Um, can we help them you know, develop their quality systems a lot more. So you mentioned the word regulator. I'm going to ask you about Indore and uh, Goa. That's my cue. Hmm. Um, regulatory issues on both of these facilities, yeah. extremely important plans for you all. When is the remediation expected to be completed? And when can we see it out of the woods? So I th I go, both of them are at different time points, right? Uh, not the most ideal situation uh, to be in at a, at a point that we are, but in, Let's say in Goa, we are about a year, about 14, 16 months from our last audit. Right? Usually the FDA comes back within 20 to 24 months uh, to come back and audit. Um, I do expect that we would possibly be re-audited in Goa in the, in, in the next six months. I'd like to believe that by December we'd be ready for that, right? Uh, if not already. Um, Indore is slightly longer because their last inspection was in February. Um, and I think if we can uh, possibly get re-audited by next year, uh, possibly July, August, that'll be great. But the remediation in Indore will also be over around the July time period.